Hey guys, um, so this is my first time doing um, a collab, and I, I'm hoping to do many more after this. Um, this one here though is going to be called Five Frugal Things That We Do In Our Home, and the three other lovely ladies that are uh, doing this with me are Cheryl from Poultry Palooza Homestead, uh, Anne Marie from It's Just My Life's CA and Michelle from Mission 8 and don't worry I will leave all their um, all the links to their uh, channels in the description box all right so don't forget to go over and check out Michelle and Anne Marie and Cheryl uh, they did uh, their five frugal things that they do in their home and you're not gonna want to miss it because they, we are pretty, all three of us, or all, sorry, all four of us are pretty uh, different people. We live kind of different lifestyles, kind of the same, kind of not the same. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do in their homes. So don't forget to go check them out and subscribe to them. I'm sure they will, they would greatly appreciate it. Okay, so I want to uh, start by saying sorry for the quality um of this video I'm doing it on my phone and it just doesn't want to seem to focus everything just kind of seems blurry so I'll have to just bear with me at least you guys can at least see um, now I'm going to start by talking about what I have here the first thing that I do is uh, my, my boyfriend is a diabetic and he's got all kinds of medications and things that he has to take for different things um, so he saves his bottles at the end of them well whenever he uses them up uh, we wash them out really really good and then I dry them and I store them just in a regular old grocery bag until I need them now over here are some empty ones I just wanted to show you just the different sizes there's kind of like these smaller ones here these are perfect for I've got this, some things over here that I've got those in and then there's the little bit bigger size one and then there's this, oh, this great big, big column. And I use them, like I said, for different things. So the smaller ones I like to put, uh, you'll have to, my supply is kind of low here. Um, this one here I usually keep my tacks in. I only have one tack left uh, just because I use them all up to hang my Christmas decorations. Uh, but this is a very good uh, storage for tacks. And then um, those little hair elastics, those tiny little rubber band ones. Um, I usually keep them in here. And then I have, I keep these in the bathroom, just lined up in my cupboard where you can't even see them. Uh, but that way, there, all my little rubber bands are in one place. And then I also put um, hooks. I've got some different hooks in there, uh, the ones that you screw in, and then uh, when I'm looking for one, I know exactly where they are, so you can use um, these inside or outside or even in the garden, such as here I have, um, these ones are green, green pepper seeds, and here is um, I don't know, the quality sucks on this. Here is some dill. Um, I had bought some a couple stalks of dill uh, this fall, and this is what came off of it. And then we planted some outside, and it came up. So uh, I kept all the seeds possible, and there is we're gonna have a ton of dill next year. So these are good little um, air airtight containers. Well. No, they're not airtight, I guess. Hmm. Okay. So, I keep seeds and household necessities and beauty products. And then another good, um, I'm gonna go get a different light. Just hang on. Here we go. 
Uh, okay, so um, when you buy Christmas lights, you usually get those little packs with the extra ones in them. Uh, this is a nice safe storage place uh, to store those away for the season. And then here, um, I would put um, little like drill bits. I could put all the star, star ones and the square ones in one. And then here is more beauty, I guess you could call it. Um, those little bobby pins and hair clips. That is, um, you could probably put the bobby pins in one separate if you had enough of them. Um, I usually don't need them, so, but I do have a couple on hand and that's where I keep them. And then here I could have put some more money in there, but uh, there's a dime in there. Uh, you can use them if you wanted to put, fill one up with dimes, nickels and quarters, or toonies, or loonies. You could fill up this whole thing just with random change if you wanted, and keep that put away in your drawer, in your uh, like sock drawer or something. Uh, I remember growing up my grandfather always had pill containers filled with change for when he would play cards. So that's where I got this uh, handy tip from. And then another good thing is um, if you have crafts and jewelry and different things like that. Uh, here I just have some different col colored pebbles. And in here I have uh, sea glass and some sea pottery that I found. And it's a good little place uh, to keep them. And then that way there if they fall, they don't spill. The cap is on there tight and they're very trusty and I mean why fill up the landfill with all these bottles for nothing or even yeah you could recycle them but I prefer to find purposes for for my things so um, I don't want to spend too much time on this so basically that is my tips for um, my uh, recycled pill, pill containers now I also recycle like butter containers and spaghetti sauce dishes and jars and things like that. Uh, I didn't want to take up too much time talking about that, but I could do a whole new video just on that. But it kind of ties in with um, the reusing containers and stuff. But I just mostly wanted to focus on this because this we have like a lot of, and I'm sure. There's not everyone has to take as much medication as my boyfriend does, but um, those who do and who have a lot of pill containers, this could be an option for you guys. Okay, so the second thing that I want to talk to you guys about in this collab, uh, how I save money in our home um, by being frugal, is um, a long time ago we had purchased. Um, obviously the laundry soap that was in here and the laundry soap that was in here uh, we used to have one like this it was fabric softener I don't know if it was this that was leaking anyways I ended up getting rid of the other one but we had used it for a long time uh, so what I do is let's just say I buy a great big um, thing of laundry soap like this the big big ones this one here does 78 loads so what I do is I come home and I would dump half of um, half of the laundry soap into this empty container where it's empty now because I just used up the rest of it there this one's got some stuff left in it but what I would do is I would take half of the laundry soap from here put it in here and then just fill both of them up with water um, my clothes smell clean, look clean, feel clean, um, and basically I'm getting like almost 160 loads doing it this way. So I thought that that was brilliant whenever since I've been doing this and um, I don't have to go out and buy laundry soap every single month which is awesome. Um, now right now uh, we have to um, my washer died, <laughs> sorry, um, my, first my dryer had died, like, two years ago, and then recently I decided 
to do some YouTube, uh, watch some YouTube videos and see if I could um, fix the dryer myself. And that was really successful, which was awesome. So I got the dryer fixed and not even a week later, my dryer uh, stopped emptying. Um, and I also did some uh, research on the internet and I think it's the pump. So I'm going to buy a new uh, pump for the washer and um, try that out and hopefully it'll work because it just it won't drain the water that's like the only problem I've checked the pipes and stuff for it to be clogged it's not clogged so I'm assuming that it's the motor um, so right now we're kind of washing I'm washing my clothes in the bathtub with laundry soap and my towels I put jet -X in them and typically if I had the washer like going um, I think uh, that's that's exactly what happened I had my container like this and it had fabric softener in it and since it's been like I don't know a month or two now uh, s maybe even longer since the washer's been broke so um, I ended up I ended up throwing out my container for the uh, fabric softener because I don't use it now that um, the summer's gone and and things like that. Anyways, because I usually hang my clothes out in the summer anyways. So um, that's why I ended up getting rid of my container for the fabric softener. But typically I would have these two and another one. And I just, even with the fabric softener, same thing. If I come home and I buy a big jug of it, I'll keep half of it in the jug and I would have put the other half in this container and filled it up with water and then my laundry soap and fabric softener goes a bit further. So that is my second tip. Okay, so my third tip, um, frugal tip that we do to save money in our home is we buy food on the discount shelf. Um, I've been doing this for years, uh, I don't get sick. The food's fine. Obviously, it's a matter of common common sense. If it's covered in mold, I'm not going to buy it. Um, if it's rotten, I'm not going to buy it. It's you know, it's just having a little bit of common sense. Uh, the other night we went to Walmart, and for one dollar, I got all this celery. And there's not a thing wrong with the celery. You would probably get a stock like that. If you're lucky. You know, I think there's more than a stalk on here because I can't even put my hand around it. And it's already, um, looks like it's been washed and cleaned and cut. Which it wouldn't have mattered if it wasn't cut anyways because I would have dehydrated the leaves. Um, and then this one here had more in it but we've been using it. So for $2 I got two great big things of celery and there's nothing wrong with them. I've gotten, um... Lemons, apples, bananas, potatoes, tomatoes, you name it. And I probably got it on discount and it was fine. And if I do notice, like the other day, I had purchased some tomatoes and some of them had gotten soft because I bought them. I come home and then it was just go, go, go. So I for, kind of forgot to take them out of their plastic and um, they were sitting on the counter and they kind of got soft. So what I did with that, I just had, I made a... Uh, tomato like tomato paste tomato sauce thing I just put all my tomatoes in a pot and brought them to a boil and then I uh, have my electric little thing that like grinds it up I guess and it turned out to be like a nice tomato paste and then I just added um, some veggies to it and some hamburger meat and we've got a spaghetti sauce so there's always a use for that and this is usually like the first place that I go is the discount section and then the same with the bread we're almost done this bread here um, as you can see I buy the 50% off stuff there's no mold on it it's perfectly fine I've been doing bread like this for years I've been buying off the discount shelf I've even they had uh, bread on sale before and I paid it was like either 50 cents or 75 cents a loaf and I stocked up because I come home put that in my freezer and I just take them out as I need it and it's fine it works fine for us the bread is great my son likes it I don't I'm not much of a bread eater 
I do have toast once in a while, and it's no different than going out and paying two, three dollars for a loaf of bread. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now, I have um, where we live. There is a Ben's Bakery outlet type of store, and they basically sell reduced bread. Um, th th this is typically where I get my bread. Just be this one here came from Superstore, um, but I usually go to Ben's because their bread is a dollar fifty nine a loaf. Always, you can get the stuff with the grains. You can get the Wonder Bread. You can get the Villaggio. There's you name it. You can get practically whatever you want wraps uh, a pack of hamburger buns 12 hamburger buns with the sesame seeds a dollar fifty nine you're not going to find a deal like that anywhere else so usually ben's bakery is where i shop and then they have these cute little cards where um let's just say i go in and i spend ten dollars they're going to mark off like there's like different amounts and then once the little cards are full you get yourself a free loaf of bread or wraps or anything. Even the wraps are $1.59. Uh, raisin bread are $1.59. They have good deals on cookies and like, oh, it's, it's awesome. I love that store. Uh, so let me know if you guys have a Ben's Bakery around where you guys uh, live. All right, so this is my tip number three is that I shop on the discount shelf or discount stores. Okay, so the fourth thing that we do in this house to be frugal, save some money. This bag, this is my half a bag. I have a full bag under the sink. I just wanted to show you guys. Some of these are small. Um, I'm not the one that cut these ones up. I got my, I got Jay to do it, but um, I would have made them a little bit bigger. The next ones I will make uh, a lot bigger just because I find you can't really... Um, you can't really clean with small ones like this. I don't, I mean, like he wasn't really thinking when he was cutting them, obviously. But um, these uh, these ones here, like you can see, this shirt here had a big Javex stain, so I just cut the whole shirt up. And then this one here, I didn't like, so that's what I do. I have um, when we have shirts that are stained and things like that unless they're in really really good condition I'll donate them typically we make them into rags though um, and this saves us on buying paper towels um, we don't have a plug for the um, bathtub and I don't think I've had a plug for the bathtub since I moved in here like in 2005 so um, I'd say yeah at least 11 years <laughs> that I haven't had a plug for the Willie down Tassie for the uh, bathtub so these are good little you just shove that down in the hole and it blocks plugs the um, plugs the tub up so this is another one of our money saving uh, tips frugal tips is we make our own rags and then they can be used for cleaning uh, if you got like a kind of like a gross something gross to clean up that you don't you can just pick it up and toss it. It doesn't. It doesn't even matter because it's. We've got so many of them. So if uh, I would highly highly recommend this to you guys, if uh, oh, if you guys haven't um, haven't tried it, I would give it a try um, because it's. I mean, why throw perfectly good clothes? Like I mean, they're not good to wear because they're stained. But that's the whole purpose of being frugal, is trying to make use out of everything that we have and use it to its maximum potential, I guess you could say. Alright, so that is my frugal tip number four, is we save our old clothes and such to make rags. And then I just keep them in a grocery bag. So that is tip number four. Okay, so... This is my fifth and final um, frugal tip for you guys. Uh, I have like a million more, but this collab was just five. So I had to pick my five favorite. Um, so basically, we have a nice little razor. And I cut everybody's hair. Uh, 
Well, Jay can pretty well cut his own. I usually just go and make sure that he didn't, like, miss any spots in the back. And then my son's hair and Jay's hair grows so fast. I say, I would say, like, no joke, every month, every month and a half, I got to cut my son's hair. Uh, if it gets too long, he just, he sweats and sweats and sweats. So I just keep it short. Uh, I don't give him like a buzz cut or nothing. I just, his head's usually shaved, but there's enough hair. You know what I mean? He's cute. He's not completely bald. Uh, that alone, I don't know how much a haircut is, like what, 10 bucks? If I had to spend $10 every, you know what I mean? Every month, I guess, it would be a hundred, that would still be a hundred just for my son, that would be $120 a year that I would have to spend on haircuts. Um, we had one that we had bought, and it didn't really work all that well. It was like a good brand name. Um, and then uh, my mom had found these. They were on sale for like, I don't even know how much they were, but they work so good. Uh, it comes with like a little bag to put on so that you don't get hair everywhere and then there's like I just took this bag and put everything so that it was in one little uh, one area but there's the brush to brush it off uh, the oil that comes with it and then there's all the little pieces inside and it even comes with this little I'm guessing it's a nose trimmer or something of the sort and then they also give you instructions on how to do like certain haircuts. So that was a very uh, awesome purchase on her part. So she gave us one and like she knows how much I cut my son's hair. So I cut my own hair too. I don't cut it as often, but if I'm in the mood for something different, we'll just go ahead and cut my hair. I mean, it's hair it grows back anyway, so I haven't screwed up too, too bad. And I've been cutting my hair. I don't think like... There's times my mom was like, I'll take you to the hairdresser and, you know, I'll pay to get your hair cut. And I'm like, I don't want to. Like, I'm fine doing it at home myself and it saves money and everybody's happy. All right. So, uh, let's just see. That was my fifth. This is my fifth and final tip is cutting hair at home. Saves lots of money. Alright, so that wraps up this collab uh, for five frugal things that we do in our homes. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned, you know, something new. Um, I'm sure many of you probably do some of the things that we do or that I do. And um, it's just, I, I love being frugal. It's just, it's fun, it's exciting, it's a challenge. Um, so don't forget to go over and check out Cheryl. Anne Marie and Michelle's videos uh, and find out what they do in their homes to be frugal. Like I said, the links are below in the description box. And uh, just let us let us know in the comments what you guys do at your house to save you guys money and be frugal. Um, if you guys are interested in doing a collabor in, like collaboration with me. Uh, please just let me know in the comments below and I'm sure we can fix something up. Um, I'm open to all possibilities and yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching and remember, stay frugal.